Hey guys, welcome back to part two of our Hackintosh build. Um, in the in the last section, we weren't quite done. Yeah. No, it, we just had a couple of fans we had to hook up in the front panel. They were both connected by a Molex connector, which I showed you guys earlier. All we did is plug it in, presto, ready to go. Um, you know, if, you, if this video helped you at all, please give us a thumbs up. We're going to be coming back with some, some more tutorials, mainly on After Effects. And if you're into After Effects, you're not going to want to miss my partner's tutorials. You know, he works for two or three professional studios, including cable companies, and he does a lot of tricks and a lot of cool stuff on After Effects, and you're not going to want to miss this stuff. He teaches also on the side, so he, he, he's, he's really good at making sure everybody knows and understands why and what's going on. So, you, again, you don't want to miss that. Okay, so I'm assuming you guys pressed that snake it on button, right? Which is all good. Hopefully it posted for you, which means, you know, it came up asking for a boot device and everything's working. On the Asus board, we have these little sensors that goes through, you know, and uh, checks CPU, checks the RAM, checks the GPU, makes sure things, everything's hooked up, and then presto, a logo comes up, like that one. So hit the on button, hold delete, and bam. So we know everything works. Pretty kick ass. Okay, so now that we got all that done, take a deep breath, you guys. This this part is I'm bald. But I had like, you know, three foot long braids coming out of my head, like uh never. So here we go. Okay, the first thing you're gonna notice is your BIOS is probably a different number than mine. Um I we use 3203, we used it on both builds, it's worked great. So first thing you should do is run over to Asus and spend about nine freaking hours finding nothing on their site. Um, no, I'm actually going to put the link in there to save you about nine hours. Okay, so download the BIOS, throw it on a little thumb drive. And there's a couple ways you can do this. You can either try Asus ways that never works for me. You stick it in the back of the board and push their little button and it's supposed to flash and, and switch for you, but it never works for me. So go ahead, plug it in. If it doesn't work... Um, Go into your BIOS, um, the top right hand corner, then click advanced mode, then tool, and then tools you want to hit uh, flash utility. Once you go in there you're going to see the little, um, your, your BIOS. Um, click on it, the new BIOS and just follow the instructions there. It's gonna go through its thing and then go back out of there. Sorry about the footage guys. I paid my 12 year old 50 cents an hour to you know point this little POS at the TV but uh... right dude I'm way too cheap to sit on a box. Uh, too cheap to freaking rip screen capture software. To get back to this screen, just go up to the right hand corner, hit the advanced button, and go back to easy mode. Okay, your BIOS should say 3203 now. If it does, great. Um, if you're using a DVD for your boot, for iBoot or whatever, um, go ahead and put that in the tray now. If you're using USB, put that in. Restart your computer holding delete. It's going to bring you right back to this page. Once it does, the bottom right hand side is a boot menu button. Click it and click on whatever your boot uh, device is, whether it be a CD, DVD, or a USB drive. Okay, if you guys got this screen, hell yeah. One step closer. When you see this Apple logo pop up, just simply press the arrow key down once. Some menus are going to pop up. This is where you insert your boot flags that everybody's been talking about. Um, this could be like a hundred different combinations. I'm going to lay it out for you. To be perfectly honest with you guys, I know what some of these boot flags do, how they do it, I have no clue. I mean, how does a washing machine work? No one freaking knows, man. That's why they call it science. Okay, let's cross our fingers and hit enter. All right, if everything went well, you should be looking at this screen. Go ahead and hit uh, English first. And before you hit OK, go up to the top left of the screen and hit Utilities and select Disk Utility. Select your SSD and then select Partition. 
select one partition and name it SSD and hit apply. Then partition. Okay, go ahead and close out disk utility and hit continue. Hit agree and then select your SSD. Hit install and then you can sit back and crack your mountain do and chill for a bit. I should make you guys listen to elevator music, but I'm not that cruel. So I'm kind of digging on this band, Purdy Ring. Check it out. Alright guys, you shouldn't have been able to install your software. Your computer would have restarted and you would have ended up right back here, except for now you got two out the road. You're gonna to wanna to hit right and then down arrow key and add this boot flag. Okay guys, now you just wanna hit enter. Next next thing you're gonna see, if everything you know is going cool, is a whole crap load of code. No one knows what it is. It's science. If it stops and doesn't load your OS, take a, a picture of like the last 10 lines. That's what you're going to use to throw up on Tony Mac's site to have guys uh, let you know exactly what's going on with it. You know, you might have a piece of hardware that doesn't isn't compatible or whatever, so you're going to want that. Hey guys, look at this. Alright, follow directions. To ask you what you want for your internet connection, just click on this computer does not have um, an internet connection for the moment. Okay, from here if you were to shut down your computer right now and reboot, it would not boot without the, the USB. So we're gonna go through um, and install all the kecks we need off UniBeast. Okay, right off the bat, you're going to want Kex Wizard, Multi Beast 4.6.1, and Multi Beast 5.2.0, along with this Voodoo Kex that I'll supply the link to. Okay, go ahead and open up Multi Beast 5.2 and check. If you're doing this build, check exactly what I have. No, hit continue and install. And then when that's finished installing, you want to open up um, the other multi beast. Go ahead and copy this and do the same, install it the same way. Now I want you to click once on your desktop so that 
finder shows up in the top left. Go up to finder, click on it, hit preferences, and then under general, you're gonna make sure to click hard disk. That's gonna allow you to see your your hard drive on your um, on your desktop on the right hand side. Now click on your hard drive, double click on your hard drive, and you'll see a folder there called extras. Go ahead and click on that. You're going to see a file called chameleon and one called SMBIOS. I want you to highlight those and open both of them. Okay, right now your files aren't going to look exactly like mine, but they will in a minute. What I want you to see is that the boot flags that we used earlier to get in um, to the OS, some of these you should be able to recognize up here. Now down at the bottom of uh, uh, Chameleon, you're going to see mine says SMCPU blah 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 1201. I want you to type that in exactly like that. And then on the SM BIOS, it's the same set, it's just sitting above everything. As you can see in the picture, I want yours to look just like that and save it. Okay, now I want you to go to Cax Wizard and open it up. Click on installation and grab your Voodoo Kext and drop it right on top of it. And then in, go ahead and hit install. Okay guys, I want you to go back up to your SSD and go to system, library, extensions. These are where all your Kexts live. If you need to delete one or add one, you can simply right click and send it to the trash but to install these say you throw one away you need it if you want to reinstall it open up Kex Wizard and drop it into the white field again and install it now at this point you guys should have a working bootable Hackintosh I wanted to mention that if any of you guys have troubles out there with audio and you just do not want to mess with it um, I mean this what I provided should work for you and this board, but if for some reason it doesn't and it becomes a pain in the butt, you can buy a $9 uh, USB audio card. You plug it in and it instantly recognizes you have audio, everything works and it's great. So if you get too frustrated, just grab one. I think we picked one up from for a buddy of mine from um, Best Buy or something like that. Again, you guys, if, you, if this helped you out and you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. And have fun with your beast of a freaking Hackintosh.